Hello, and welcome to Do Dancing Clams. This is a quick Blender 3.4 tutorial on how to procedurally unwrap a curved path so the texture follows the curve. This technique will also work on 3.3 and 3.2. You just need to use the old transfer attributes node instead of the new sample index node. If you do UV unwrapping the classic way in geometry nodes, you get this effect, which is pleasant, but the bricks will follow the gridded square rather than following the curve of the path. Using this technique, you can get the texture to actually follow the shape of the path for a much more natural looking result. First, make sure Node Wrangler is enabled in Edit Preferences Add-ons. Now I want to replace this cube with a spline. Go into Edit Mode, select all the points and delete them, and give us a more usable path. And I'm going to scale up this last node just a little bit. Tab to get back out of edit mode. Now create some geometry nodes. I'm going to whip through this first part pretty fast because this is traditional UV unwrapping. I have that covered in another video link below, but I have to show it here because the rest of the video depends on this. First, I want to resample the curve to allow the user to choose the level of detail. Drag this into space. So if you drag that into space and select Group Input, we automatically create a new variable, a new input variable that we can see under the inputs here, and it'll also show up under the attribute modifiers as an input. Give that a more meaningful name. Now I want to use Curve to Mesh to convert the simple curve into a path that has some width. And the profile curve will just be a simple line perpendicular to this path. I want to put this under user control as well. We'll add a variable to control the path width. Make it a float and hook it up to both endpoints of the line. What we've done here is take the path width, multiply it by negative 1x, use that for the start, and positive 1x and use that for the end. The x direction is perpendicular to the original curve, so that basically gives us the width. And because y and z are 0, they get filtered out. Now let's UV unwrap this. You can use a standard UV unwrap. Because this is a flat object, we don't need to provide any seams. Just use the typical UV unwrap. We'll use store named attribute to add this to the geometry in the face corner domain. It only works if this data is saved in the face corner because that's where the shader is going to be looking for it. Speaking of the shader, let's handle that right now. So let's provide a texture for us to use. I'm going to use the clinker texture from Polyhaven. That is in the video description as well. Just going to go to my asset library. So I'm going to use the Floor Clinkers texture from Polyhaven that is linked in the description as well. And to see this, I'm going to switch over to the Cycles engine and the shader. We need to do a set material. And that won't look like much because we have not set the UV map that we just created. Let's do that bring up the shader editor. To summon the UV map, we'll use an attribute node. And give it the name UV Unwrap, which we used back in the geometry nodes. Before, I would, at this point, play with the scale and the orientation to get the most pleasant effect possible. There's no reason to do that now because we're going to do something that's infinitely better than this. Let's give ourselves a bit more width. Yeah, it's more like it. This shows the problem exactly. The UV map that's generated by default will follow the curve of the original geometry. This creates a cookie cutter stamp that goes right down on the texture. 
So instead of coming up with the texture that follows the curve, we basically come up with a curved shape sample of the original texture. The fix for this is, instead of having a UV map that looks like the original curve, we want a UV map that's straight. We will get a straight section of the texture, and we will apply that along the curve, causing the texture to follow the curve. To do that, we'll just create a straight curve. Create a curve line, and we'll keep this on the XY plane. We will resample this just like we did the other curve so that we can maintain a one-to-one -one correspondence between the face corners on one geometry and the face corners on the other. We'll do a curve to mesh in just the same way we did on the other one. And let's see what we're doing. So far, so good. So really, we're just going to UV unwrap this. This is a new node. It's one of the three new nodes uh, that, were, that are replacing the old transfer attributes node. It's exactly the same if you're doing this in 3.3 or before. You can just use transfer attributes instead of what we're doing here. Instead of UV unwrapping the original curve, I want to UV unwrap this straight curve. I'm going to need a vector and I want the domain to be face corner. This domain needs to match this domain. And we need to tell it the index value. So what this does is UV unwrap the straighter curve and index by index copy the UV map from the straight curve onto the curve curve. And you see we get something that's much more natural. I want to rotate this so to follow along the curve. So in the shader editor, Change that to 90, and you can play with the values a little bit to pretty it up. That is pretty amazing. One other quick thing I'd like to address before leaving is how to use this technique on a circle. Give ourselves a circle. Add our geometry nodes. Let's make this unique. Give it some width. And the only real difference you have to make is, see how this over here is a little bit plain? To make this work in a circle, you need to account for the fact that the straight wall we're using for the UV unwrap needs to be one section longer. And that nails it. Absolutely love this. I am a huge fan of modeling individual stones in the path for maximum realism, but this comes at a cost of a fairly high poly count. Letting a texture do most of the heavy lifting, as described in this video, cannot be beat for low poly count solutions. It also makes for a much simpler node layout. If you want to see a more detailed approach to path building, check out the video on the right. For a more detailed description of UV unwrapping and geometry nodes, check out the video on the left. Thank you for watching this, and I hope you enjoyed it.